Hey guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the most recent roadmap update from Studio 397. Now I really like this sort of video where I sit down in a nice relaxed atmosphere and discuss the previews or the information that we're going to be getting in today's roadmap. Uh, uh, the really great part about YouTube for me having a, a decent sized community now is being able to create a discussion with you guys and getting various points of views from different backgrounds. My, my point of view is potentially biased because RF2 is my favourite sim, my personal favourite sim. Um, so, you know, I, I might be a little bit biased from talking about that, which is why it's good and I encourage you, you people to give me your points of view about this roadmap update in the comments below. So first things first, VR. Now, virtual reality is something that doesn't, you know, I'm not particularly interested in the moment because I don't really have the means to to experience it. I, I have nowhere near enough money to purchase, you know, a Vive or an Oculus Rift, etc. So I don't really look at these things too seriously when they come out. Recently, a friend of mine actually purchased a VR headset. He bought an Oculus Rift and he said that it really transformed driving for him. He thought it was so awesome. This is someone who used to have a triple screen setup as well. So I think from going triple screens to VR and seeing that much difference is a really cool progression. I, I have no doubt that VR is the future uh, for sims with a fixed frame of reference so you know like a cockpit so you know, a train simulator flying simulator racing of course so i'm really interested to see that studio 397 has a knowledge of this and uh are starting to try and get that uh functionality into their game perhaps a bit more interesting for us non-vr peasants is an update on the dx11 progress now uh, in last month's roadmap i think it was about a month ago now we were we were shown our first preview shots of dx11 I remember taking to Twitter to sort of see what people were, were speaking about, see what they thought about it. I remember seeing Empty Box say that it just looked a little bit more blue, which made me laugh a little bit. But I think these new updates or these new previews are showing a lot more promise. The preview shots we have now, they just look a little bit more natural, if you ask me. I, I always thought that RF2 had a bit of a cartoony look to it uh, in, in the early days. It still does a little bit now. It's not quite... It does look a little bit artificial, but some of these shots here, for example, these are all... Um, the shots we'll be seeing in the roadmap, we see carts here, we have uh, the DW12 as well, nice little onboard of that, nice little uh, interest of road detail there as well, nice detailed uh, road surface, there are the Super DTs there, and I think my favourite image here is this one of the USFs, which I think if you sort of maybe took away the trees in the background, it looks almost real to me anyway, I think it's a really good progression, a really good step forward for RF2 in terms of you know, graphical fidelity. Now the observant among you might have noticed that all the screenshots here, all the previews, are actually used using NOLA Motorsports Park, which is actually due for release. It's a new a bit of content from 397, which is coming out on the February the 28th, I believe. So that's cool to see that. NOLA is a bit of a weird choice, I think, in terms of having a new track in the game, because aside from, I think, one IndyCar race in 2015, it's a relatively obscure track, but... I'm never going to argue against new free content coming into the sim, so I'll be interested to give it a drive when it comes out. Also seeing a bit more info here for the competitions that are looking to be released uh, in, the, in the summertime later on this year. Um, competitions I think is something that will be a good idea for RF2, in, in general anyway. I mean, the online functionality for RF2 is there, people can take part in it. It's not difficult to get online and get onto a server if there's no password etc and someone set one up. But um, in terms of actually racing people online, it's very hard to find a server where there are actually people in. A lot of the time you'll see a server populated by 18 cars, but 17 of those cars will be AI and one person will be human. And it's very hard just to find a pickup race in R-Factor 2 outside of league racing. The organised racing in R-Factor 2 is pretty much all, you know, that's what's keeping R-Factor 2 online alive. So having something like this where you can do a competition um, and then see your times compared to other people, I think it will bring more people uh, to play RF2, I don't know, a bit more, not casually the word, but they'll, they'll come back to RF2 outside of trying to maybe do league practice or testing mods, etc. Because R-Factor 2 isn't a game you relax with, in my opinion. I was having a discussion with Bailey just before we came on, and we said um, you know, games like Project Cars, a set of course, uh, AMS, they're, they're, they're games you can sort of get into very quickly, get into an AI race, and it'll be nice and fun straight away. R-Factor 2 takes a little bit more setting up, and for that reason, I think that it's not a game that a lot of people play just as single player. People play it a lot more. They either play it online or don't play it at all. So hopefully competitions here will give a bit more uh, playability to R-Factor 2. The UI. The UI, dear God, it looks so much better than what we have right now in the game. Uh, the picture you're seeing right now, I'll just scroll down a bit so you can see uh, all of it. 
is uh, actually interesting because it's using the uh, the details or the um, or the race basically of of last year's 12 hours of Sebring, which is you know, quite coincidental that it's uh, that's what I was practicing yesterday. But um, as you can see here, I mean, this is looking at a sector graph, and I, I believe this is a um, an in-game, so it will replace sort of the setup screen that you see now when you go into R Factor 2 on the timing screen there. Look how much more information you have here. I mean, we have each sector here, we have laps there, we have gaps, and that's all there. That's all there right now. It's, you haven't In uh, the current uh, UI, you have to sort of go and search for these little individual details, and it's very hard to put things together, whereas here it's a lot easier to see, and the information is a lot more... Uh, easily accessible. There's also talk of having the ability to add and take away modules to this as well, which I think is a very cool idea. Um, R Factor 2 was never really the the most easy thing to get on with when it first came out. When it first came out, and I'll, I'll try and find a, a video of an old Twitch clip somewhere. The old UI looked so bad; it looked like a you know a game from 2005. It, it, I actually think the old R Factor One <laughs> UI looked better than uh, when we had the stock RF2 stuff when it first came out. This is such a big improvement, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they implement this. And with radio communication, it seems that Studio 397 are looking to build on the existing spotter uh, that RF2 has in the game at the moment. Now, I didn't really use the spotter that much in the stock game, because I don't I don't really do over racing, and you know, that's more commonly when you get a spotter. And I find the current spotter a little bit distracting. I'll only ever have him on may maybe sometimes for lap times, but when I'm using Trap Map, I don't have any spotter on at all. The thing that excites me most about this, uh, this radio communication update is this bit here, saying we intend to make the communication more interactive by giving you the ability to ask your information or instructions. Now, um, there's a very similar functionality in uh, F1 2016, the Codemasters game, and I thought that was a really awesome part of that game. You would basically press a button and say, uh, you know, how, how many laps have I got left in the stint, or how far am I from the guy in front, and then the... Uh, the game would pick that up and then that information would be fed back to you via you know via voice or from, a, from the pit engineer i think that's a really great thing to put in rf2 because you know the, the last thing you want to do i mean I, I find myself getting distracted sometimes in vc when i'm trying to set up my pit menu trying to put the, the right fuel in the right tires etc just better press a button and say right this is what i want for my pit stop and the game doing that would be so much better and so much less distracting from my from a racer's point of view anyway um, again, something I'm very excited for and I really hope they get it right because it's very easy to do these things wrong and uh, they need to look at F1 2016, that example, and, get, and shoot for that because that is the best we've seen so far and I would love to have that in R Factor 2. They also seem to want to use the radio communication function for, for series, so for race directors etc. I mean, uh, again, VUC is a good example of this. You might have heard during the broadcast that we have someone come over the radio and say, right, 10 seconds to code 80 and then they count it down and go to code 80 or give them the green flag. Um, but a lot of leagues use TeamSpeak or Discord, and I don't think there's going to be really much, I don't know, much to draw them away from that. Seeing as um, you know, TeamSpeak is uh, a really good external program that runs as a separate of RF2, so if there's an issue in RF2, that isn't carried over into TeamSpeak. So I don't see that being very popular amongst leagues, but it depends how good the, the inbuilt command is. I mean, we'll have to wait and see for that one. And last but not least, modding. Uh, it seems that 397 are very keen to get in touch with modding teams to try and help them out with the transition to DX11. Now what, what this says to me is that uh, uh, mods that are sort of built in DX uh, or DX, DX9, um, they're going to have issues when sort of transferred over to DX11. So there's, got, there's some process there. I mean, I'm not a modder, so I might just be talking out my ass here. But that's my understanding of this situation. And it's nice again to see that... Uh, um, 397 are conscious of this, you know, they're conscious of this community and they're trying to reach out. Um, I, I would have seen ISI just go bam and just release that update and then and then try and limit damage after that. Whereas 397 are looking forward, looking to the future and saying, right, okay, this might be a problem. Let's try and get people together and try and get people ready for this update, which I think, again, is a good move from 397. Now, personally, I think this sort of progress from Studio 397 and R Factor 2 is astounding if you want to compare it to how ISI would have handled something like this. Um, R Factor 2, in the last year before it was acquired by 397, really sort of bogged down. You know, it was a game that was just stuck and it wasn't moving anywhere. It was, this is what it was. You were still charging this massive online membership fee. Um, it was a game that was expensive, it didn't really offer much to it. And it seems that 397 has sort of acknowledged this, acknowledged the faults that the game has and it's trying to build on that and push forward in the future 
they're acknowledging that there is a, a community around RF2, a very passionate community, which I you know I like to think that I'm a, a big part of. Um, and acknowledging again, I mean, if you look at R Factor 1, for example, that's a game that would have died out years and years ago. I mean, people are still driving R Factor 1 now. Um, I mean, it's definitely coming to the end of its life now, R Factor 1, but uh, the community and the modding community behind that kept that thing alive for ages, and that's what made R Factor 1 special. And it's been lacking in RF2 because of the complexities of modding and the time mod, etc. But it seems here, you know, that 397 are really looking to cooperate now with modders, try and help them um, with, with their content, etc. Which could maybe um, lead to more, you know, free PA releases, which would be really cool. More more affiliate releases, more just more content for RF2, which is the important thing. And um, all of this looking moving forward, and all of this stuff we've seen in the roadmap today, is something that we wouldn't have seen from Pseudo 397. This communication just would not exist and it's something that I'm glad that we're getting now. So yeah guys, as I said at the start of the video, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this roadmap. I'll put a link in the description so you can read it through at your own leisure, etc. Um, hopefully, hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I try and try and create a you know a, a nice relaxed atmosphere, but sometimes I do ramble, so ignore that. <laughs> Uh, but if you did enjoy the video or found it informative at all, then please hit that like button and of course subscribe to be notified of future videos. Take care guys, have an awesome day and see you next time.